More than a million and a half children have fled war torn Ukraine. UNICEF is working round the clock to scale up life saving programs for kids. UNICEF's emergency communication specialist, Joe English, is joining us live now. Joe, tell us what's happening where you are. I know you're in a safe place, you're at a playground, and what's going on. Good morning to you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Vandala. I mean, as you can see behind me, there are kids playing in a park, swings, roundabouts. You know, we could be anywhere in the world right now. What you can't see just a little bit further back is a bomb shelter with sandbags. And every day since I've been here, I've been here over a week now, we've had the air raid sirens go off, sometimes during the day, sometimes at night. And these kids know what to do. You know, they stop what they're doing. They find their parents and, and they head down to that shelter and, this isn't their childhood. This isn't what children should be doing on a, on a Sunday. And so it's critical that, you know, we're getting supplies and, and services to kids all over the country because we know the situation here is relatively safe. But we just can't say the same thing for children in Mariupol or, or in Kharkiv or in Kyiv. You know, and so we're doing everything we can to reach children no matter where they are. We've got, I think, 85 trucks either in transit or arrived at destinations with more than 850 tonnes of medical supplies and educational supplies and just toys, you know, just toys to keep kids entertained and keep them feeling a sense of normalcy, you know, whilst war rages around them. Okay, can you tell us exactly where are you? What town are you in right now? I'm in Lviv, so in, in the west of Ukraine. And this is actually a, a stopping off point for many families because it's close to the Poland border. And so it's somewhere where families can, can rest for a moment, you know, before making that decision on if they're going to head into Poland and, and claim refugee status because when they do take that step, obviously they're then leaving fathers behind, they're leaving, leaving older brothers behind. You know, so many families are, are doing everything they can to stay here because even for the refugees that I met in Poland last week, you know, every single one of them you speak to them and they want to come home. You know, they want they want peace so that they can come home and back to their lives and start rebuilding and and you know going back to how things were just a month ago. Thankfully, there's that 858 tons of emergency supplies to support children that you mentioned in the neighboring countries. How are these resources getting to the people that need them most? Yeah, certainly. So wherever we have safe access, we're getting in. So we had the first UN humanitarian convoy to Sumi on Friday morning. We've been getting supplies in, into Kharkiv. But honestly, you know, the, the needs are going to be huge. And, you know, as um, at the moment, you know, we're addressing these immediate needs, medical supplies, safe drinking water. But in the long term, we're going to make sure that kids are back in school. We're going to make sure that they're getting the psychosocial support that they need to recover from this trauma. And we can't do it without the support of not only governments, but also, you know, the American public have, have always been a long supporter of UNICEF. And, and, you know, that help, that support, it's felt and it's, it's, it's never been more needed. You really paint a great picture. Children driven from their homes by war and conflict. They're arriving in these neighboring countries at risk for family separation, violence. People don't think about the sexual exploitation or even trafficking that goes on. How is UNICEF creating some stability for families in such, a, such uncertain times? Yeah, you know, as you say, the risk of, of exploitation, abuse, trafficking, we know that when this large number of people are, are on the move, that that risk is, is, is sky high. So one of the things that UNICEF is doing, working with UNHCR and local authorities in the refugee hosting countries, is setting up safe spaces. We call them blue dot centers for children. And from the outside, it could be a, it could be a tent at a border point, or it could be a, you know, a room in, in a train station, but inside, anyone would recognize it. It looks like a kindergarten, it looks like a creche. There's, there's toys, there's bright colors, there's coloring books and pens and pencils. And it provides that safe space for kids, but it also allows us to have child protection experts and counsellors and legal experts there to provide these services to vulnerable families before they may fall into the hands of traffickers or, or those looking to exploit them. So much of it is so chilling. You, you make me smile when so much of the news just makes you want to cry. You must be seeing so many children who've been traumatized by these airstrikes, the bombings, the sounds, the smells. How is UNICEF able to help them? Yeah, I'll tell you a, a, a very quick story of, of one little boy who I met yesterday. Uh, his name's Danilo. He's eight years old. And he fled, he fled fighting in, 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 the, in the east of the country with his, with his mum. He has T-cell leukemia. You know, he has a very severe form of, of blood cancer and he needs dedicated support. He was evacuated to the hospital here in Lviv that UNICEF is supporting with, with key medical supplies. 
But, you know, for something like this, where it's such a severe need, it's such a specialised medical attention that's required, the hospitals have done incredible work to get him evacuated out into Poland. But this is one story. And we know that 1.5 million children are dead as refugees. 3.3 million children are displaced within the country. You know, so there are millions of these stories and we need to be doing everything we can to support every single one of them until they have that peace that they so desperately need and they can begin to, to rebuild their lives. Thank you, Joe English. UNICEF's emergency communication specialist, we so appreciate everything you do and thank you for joining us live from Lviv this morning. Have a safe day. Thank you, Randola. UNICEF needs all of the help it can get. Please go to unicefusa.com backslash ABC to donate. And remember, no donation is too small.